gonna come over this way. I'll go here. And a very good morning to you here for day two of the Oceania Under-18 Sevens Championship. My name is Patrick Folks and welcome to St. Ignatius College Riverview. And we're about to get underway the, with the uh, final pool game of the youth girls side of the competition. It is the Australian side taking on the Fiji team. And uh, it's my great privilege to welcome my uh, good friend, rugby.com today, your colleague, Michael Doyle from New South Wales Rugby. Doyle, welcome to St. Ignatius, my friend. How are you? Yeah, good morning and uh, welcome to everybody and uh, thank you for having me. Looking forward to it greatly. Uh, everything's going well. Um, really looking forward to uh, this clash here. The Australians are in pretty hot form, I tell me, so I'm looking forward to this. Yep, as we are underway. Here in the first match of day two of the Oceania Sevens Championship, and it's Fiji in possession early. Look to get the ball out through Lavaki. Australia rushing up in defence. Referee just creating a bit of a defensive lapse, and this could be a turnover for the Aussie Youth Girls, and it is. Australia probing. We've got numbers out here if they can use it. They get it to Ravel Blair. Solid run. Eventually brought down is Whitfield. And a forward pass. Just forcing the error there, the Fiji in defence. The defence there, both from both sides, have been excellent. They've moved across the field very, very well, covering, covering them off. The Australians get that turnover, but forced by, by the defence of the Fijians to throw a forward pass, and the Fijians will have this scrum. So, Fiji with the feed. Moving the ball out wide. Lavalaki throws the ball back on the inside. Fiji just not able to get out of their own 22 at the moment. Good pressing defence from Australia. But now here comes potential opportunity. But good tackle from Georgia Hannaway. They get up and go again. And we've got the forward pass. So the Australian defence forces the error, Michael Doyle. Well, the defences the defenses of both sides here have been excellent in uh, putting a lot of pressure on the attacking sides, not enabling the attacking sides to move forward at all. So not to be able to... I think both sides will be looking to get a little more depth in their attack and, and try to go around the outside because they're not going through at the moment. Yet to have a score in this match... The Australians have spread really wide here. Looking to get the ball out to Faith Nathan. The danger woman. Just running into a little traffic there is Mosby. Hannaway. Australia looking to create something out wide. They move the ball to Abby Holmes. Holmes with the pass. And a little show and go here by... And it's going to be a try... Whitfield. Some very good work there from Whitfield. She had two Fijian girls right on her. And the first missed tackle of the day results in a try. So they, the defence were going so well. And then they fell off the Fijians and she just ran the 22 metres to score. So Australia off to a nice confident start for them. A 5-0 kick to come. Australia only losing one match yesterday and that was to New Zealand. Get it the chance at redemption today. Kick is not successful. So the score remains at 5-0. Fiji yet to score here, Doyle. Yeah, the Australians pushing pushing the ball from edge to edge here, Patrick, and 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 that just creates the. Uh, the defence needs to work so much harder to either side of the field and that was just a result of continuous movement of the ball that gave them that try. Restart. Allowed to bounce. Good kick by Dodd. Looking to go out to the right now does Fiji. Puniakwa. She gets it to Tubitonga. 
And space opening up here for the women of Fiji. This is better. And that ball has been allowed to drop. And it was a forward pass. The double error. Oh, what a disappointment that was because the Fijians had the numbers on that right-hand side. And if that pass had gone backwards and two-hand, they were away there. So that was testing the Australian defence again by movement of the ball, moving it from side to side, which the Fijians are so well known for. It's a beautiful day here at St Ignatius College Riverview. Just a little short on penalty coming through mm, Australia's way. Yeah, just a twist of the scrum there by the Fijians and referee straight on to that. They'll take their time here, the Australians, to get themselves set. Apologies for my deep, rusky voice, Patrick. I but, just thought uh, that was your usual voice. No. <laughs> but whacked in the nose. So. Oh, dear. Yeah. I'll tell you about that later. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good counter ruck here from oh, Fiji, yeah. but no clear release of the player. Now Australia has a little bit of option to create something. Ravel Blair. Hands here from Australia. This is Faith Nathan. Faith Nathan will go all the way and slices through the defence. And Australia extend their lead to 10 points to zero. Yeah, that's, that's once again, spreading the ball wide off that penalty. The Fijians not reacting quick enough. They had the numbers down this right-hand side of the field and just quick hands. And uh, instead of giving it to the person on the furthest, on the furthest edge, uh, they decided to go through the, through the middle and just clap the pace on and the Fijians' defence was caught napping. So the Australians look like they've worked their way into some uh, sort of rhythm now. Um, got that penalty, got the got the change, the turnover from the forward pass, then got the penalty for not releasing. Good rugby by the Australians, working hard to bring it down to the field. Future stars of the Aussie Sevens program in the Aon University Sevens Series, Australia's domestic women's sevens comp. If you're listening from around the Pacific, another little knock on from Fiji. Yeah, they're just having no, having no luck here. They're giving Australia a lot of the ball. Australia in the last three or four minutes has had all the ball and Fijians are doing all the tackling. So that certainly takes it out of you as a, as a defensive site. And Australia will look to uh, certainly lift the tempo here and, and put this game beyond doubt. Make sure you join the conversation using hashtag Oceania under 18s on social media. Big day of finals coming up today to see who will be the next generation winners here in Sydney. As Faith Nathan now collects the ball, looking to find a bit of space. Throws the ball back on the inside to Hannaway. Uh, Georgia decides to attack the line. Good place. Nathan now with the ball. Ravel Blair cut out pass and hand, pass just doesn't go to hands. Hands would have been perfect there. A little bit of uh, ambition from Rhiannon Revel Blair, but halftime here in this first match of day two of the Oceania Under 18s Championship Doilo, and it's uh, it's all going the way of the women in gold at the moment. Yeah, I think uh, Coach Nathan McMahon here would would have liked that ball just go to the, the to the girl that was standing next to her, and uh, they certainly had numbers on that last play. Uh, left a try out there, but um, well ahead at the moment and, and playing with a great deal of confidence. I think the Fijian girls, have, when they've got the ball, they look quite good, Patrick. So uh, um, I think if they can hang on to the ball, they can, cause some, uh, they can cause some trouble for the Australians. But at the moment, they're turning the ball over too regularly and uh, the Australians are, are benefiting greatly from it. Doyle, you've been uh, around the traps for your farewell. You've seen plenty of Oceania tournaments. Yeah. It's uh, certainly a great way, a Pacific pathway for teams across the region to join us here in Sydney. And of course, the Major Sevens Championship, which is held in Suva, which has been committed to for the next two years, as uh, I think around October time. Fantastic tournament as well. So great yeah. to see so many countries from around the region here in Sydney today. Well, there's so much talent out there in, in the Oceania, and, uh, and it's just great to see them be, uh, having this sort of stage to be able to play on and, and, and develop their their players for the you know the World Series and uh, as as you know the women the women World Series is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and um, this the, having these Oceania t tournaments gives these these young girls the opportunity to show what they've got and really and really make uh, 
and make their World Series side stronger and stronger and stronger as these girls come through. So, and and same same with Australia. It's a great development pathway for these young girls to be able to play in, in an international tournament. So we restart. Fiji with the kickoff. Australia just looking to create something. A little space opening up. Good placement, but under pressure already. It was Abby Holmes. Now here's Courtney Hodder. You know how dangerous she is in space, and she creates the gap. Dodd. Dodd. With the pass, but it's slapped down by Fiji. Penalty to Australia. A deliberate tap down there. It, it, it went backwards. From the it's tough, that one. Yeah, it wasn't going for an intercept, no, was it? it wasn't. It was kind of just, she just had her arm up there as just the pass went. Just threw it back down. I think that's probably a bit of a... Harsh call. Courtney Hodder there did really well to come across to this uh, to the to the breakdown over here and, and get herself in a position to receive the ball. Here we go. Australia on the attack now. Holmes. Yeah, she is again hotter. He's hotter. And she'll jot the ball down for her first try of the day. Courtney Hodder, one of the stars of the inaugural Build Corp Super W. She was outstanding in the, in the Super W competition, but just the, the speed of her there twice, once over here to get to this breakdown and give the Australian the opportunity to to, uh, to to win that ball and spread the ball. And then she took the ball forward beautifully. And then, of course, she's one of the great support players of, uh, of Sevens Rugby. And she was just on the inside shoulder there and scoring the try. So that's exactly what the coach would have asked for, scoring a try quickly and uh, putting the Fijians on the back foot straight away. So... Well done, Australia. And we'll see what Fiji now can do when they get the ball. So a nice deep kick, and oh. the ball's been knocked on. It is a bit dewy here in Sydney. And now here comes the Australian attack. Mosby there with the plate. Ravel Blair. Hotter. Fiji countering well, and they've stolen the ball. What can they do now? They haven't had a lot of possession in this match. Hotter marking in defence. And an intercept! Rafael Blair will jot the ball down. It was just that pushing defence from Australia. And Fiji have... Made a costly error, Michael Doyle. Yeah, Hotter, Hotter ran into a space there, and uh, and one of the Fijian, Fijian girls came over and smashed it aground, and she lost the ball forward, giving the Fijians the opportunity, and their eyes lit up when they had the ball in broken play and thought they'd spread the ball wide, but the Australians were onto it and received the intercept and scored right under the black dot. It was disappointing for the Fijians. Their body language now is not good at this present stage. See if, the, see if the Fijians can maintain the uh, football for a little while and put some pressure back on the Australians. They're playing for their pride now. Finish this game with a bit of a flourish. Yep. Well taken. Probably creeping up yeah. slightly from <laughs> offside there that was, was That was Mosby. what we call electric defence. <laughs> <laughs> PG just patient at the moment. Courtney Hodder moves across in defence. Here comes the Fiji inside. It's this much better run. Strong run there by Liwirara. And not releasing. Disappointing there for the Fijians. Yeah, frustrating. Yeah, they can't get this referee to see the way they want to be playing and... Hodder, not with her best pass. Now, has to try and make amends for it, but she's put her teammate in space. Dodd. Here comes Australia. On the outside is Mosby. She'll run away and chop this ball underneath the posts. Hagiga Mosby, she's got some toe. Just got the ball and just put the afterburners on and away she went but once again 
Hodder in the mid, Hodder in the midfield doing some good work. Although the pass was poor, she backed it up, picked it up, put someone in a hole, and that from that moment on, the Australians had numbers there, and uh, and the try was inevitable. But uh, a good little moment there when the number three from Fiji, Bulu, came in came in contact with Hodder. Hodder is half her height, I would have thought, mm. as they came together, and and the big Fiji just barged through, and and Hodder hung on and hung on and hung on. So. Uh, Good in defence, Australia, and good in attack when they get this ball. So. A little bit of cloud cover around St Ignatius College Review in Sydney at the moment. A very learned friend of mine told me there was a 2% chance of rain today. I heard that as well. Yes, yes. And yeah. this learned friend's commitment to accuracy <laughs> should never be underestimated. No. and his knowledge of the weather too. So not going the 10 there. Australia looking to make some more pressure in defence. And this is Fiji's opportunity. Is there some space on that outside? Looking to brush the ball in. And Sarevi plays the ball on the outside. Needs to stay in field. Nuili. This is better from the flying Fijians. They look to create something in. Below. Fiji is staying on that short side now, trying to create something, and the space is starting to open up for him. And a penalty for offside from Australia, so they've forced the Australian error. Good work by Fiji down that left-hand side, just really working on the edge. And now they're spreading it wide. They're taking it quickly, just waiting for an inside run. Oh, good tackle. And now Australia have the ball. It's good pressure and defence. Now Australia goes in to support Dodd. Hodder. Moves the ball across field. Gets the ball out to Mosby. And she just shows her the outside and backs her wheels. And my friend Bulu there lying on the ground after just Mosby going around her, standing her up and going around and now she's just walking to the try line to score the try. A really good tackle back uh, back in the 22 there by Higgins, Ashby, Maddie, and and um, she uh, she just drove one of the Fijians backwards and then that formed the turnover. And the girls are embracing on the middle of the field, so we're just waiting for the kick to be taken. So absolutely, I'm sure that Australia would be very very happy with that. Um, and Fiji are a little bit disappointed on this sort of stage. Definitely, and we can just see the two teams just offering congratulations to each other as we have full time. Just waiting to see where the other teams are in the embarkment area. We're going to have a change in commentary. Uh, and I'm going to step out, Doyle, and James Gellett from rugby.com.au jumps in. Good morning, James, my friend. How are you this morning? Morning, Doyle. Great to be with you. It is a beautiful day here, champion. Lovely autumn day here in Sydney. And you're watching that game? It was a brilliant uh, second half there from the Aussies. They really uh, took it away there. Yeah, so they're just congratulating each other here as uh, the, spirit, the spirit of this tournament has been fantastic and some of the Australians over in the Fijian camp thanking them for the game. And uh, we are waiting on the, on the next arrivals of these teams. So, so Australia... <coughs> We'll go through to play New Zealand this afternoon, and that will be uh, that be one hell of a match. The New Zealand's getting an advantage there yesterday, but the Australians, I've been told, overnight have regrouped very, very well and uh, are very, very keen to play the Australians again in uh, in the upcoming. Uh, sorry, to play the New Zealanders again in the upcoming game. So some good bonding last night back at the hotel. That's exactly right, and off to do their recovery with coach Nathan. McMahon leading the way, and uh, the next teams are still warming up, James, so we might have a little bit of a break here. A little bit of a break, but it's going to be the start of the boys continuing on for their final round of matches, four yep. minutes until the next game. So uh, we'll have Samoa up against the Cook Islands to start with. Uh, Samoa obviously had a very good day one, Doylo. Yep. They went through undefeated. 
Yeah, they're, they're one of the form sides, aren't they? They're, they're, they're something that we didn't know much about, and they've come here and really um, stamped their authority on the tournament with an undefeated first day. So this will be a, this will be a tough game for the Cook, Cook Island boys, but I'm sure they're up for it as the morning, as Sunday morning for these guys has, has loomed. Absolutely, and and they the Cook Islands they battled hard yesterday. They uh, had three narrow losses, and then a, a draw to finish the day off there against the Solomon Islands. Righto. So they've they've got they've got some stuff to prove. So this could be a it could be a very good game if uh, the Cook Islanders look. Sevens rugby is all about possession, and if the Cook Islanders can hang on to the hang on to the footy against Samoa, they they've got the pace out wide. They tell me that uh, they can score some some wonderful tries. So. Their boys are walking into the into the arrival tent. They look ready to go. Yeah, both immaculate in their uh, in their outfits. The colour of sevens. Yeah, it's, it's been a wonderful weekend by all by all reports, and uh, Riverview looking magnificent here on Sunday morning. So we're just getting set here. Waiting for the call for the teams to run on. Everything's got to run perfectly to time so that all the teams know when to start preparation and, and getting themselves ready for uh, for their games. Usually they come out 25 minutes before they before they play and prepare themselves for the 14 minutes of action. And these boys have done done that on the top field and will be looking forward to getting that adrenaline pumping and getting themselves out onto the field and playing some sevens rugby here. And uh, following this match, the remainder of the final round of uh, boys' pool matches will be Fiji versus Solomon Islands and then Australia taking on Tonga. So uh, a couple of great matches to look forward to as well this morning and then we'll get into the, uh, the playoffs. Yeah, the boys, the boys' side of the draw has been a, a pretty tough one um, by all reports and um, the... This game should be no different here between Samoa and Cook Islands. And uh, as I was talking to Patrick about earlier, the, the, the pathway for these young men is, is fantastic in the Oceana now. And uh, there's, some of these boys would be not off, not far off their international side if they haven't already played, you know, in that in the World Series. Some of them now are, are as young as these boys playing in the World Series competitions. And here they come, and some big boys in both sides here. Definitely under 18s, aren't they? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Wow. Wow. They are big boys. And they will do their welcome. The Cook Island boys. Are preparing themselves for this clash. The referee in good. In, in good position, ready to go. Assistant referees, some of Australia's up-and-coming best referees out here today. So we'll, we'll certainly see some good refereeing from uh, the youth of Australian match officials, which is uh, which is fantastic and another opportunity for these boys to show on an international level. So we're underway now. Cook Islands with the kickoff. Just makes it the 10 metres and well taken there by... Samoa. They're immediately making a break down the side there, and the uh, the hooker number four, Faa Maato Tuiani, with the score. Yeah, a wonderful take from the kick off there by New Newly Vaha, and uh, from that moment on, he broke as he as he went up to take the football, he broke through two of the Cook Islands defenders and. Um, they were riding behind Samoa, and it was only one pass needed to score the first try in approximately 15 seconds. So uh, that is not what the Cook Island boys would be wanting. Mm. They would have wanted to be able to compete for that footy and and, uh, and hold on to the footy for a while. So Successful some, conversion as well, so 7-0. Yep. And there's Samoans to kick off here. Yep. Cook Islands will get their first touch of the ball. Little knock on there, back into Samoa's hands, bite to the right. Just sealing it off there. Nice step, 
Can he get the offload away? He does. And another one. Bit of a tussle for who takes the ball there to, <laughs> over the try line. They might but have we a, do have a try. They might have a contest game. Do you think that they, whoever scores the try there, that uh, the two, two of the Samoan players fighting for the ball, but Sepalulono get it, getting the, the rights, the little evoke, and uh, scoring the try. I was lucky enough, James, to be with the Samoan team during the World uh, Series in Sydney as a liaison, assistant liaison officer, and just wonderful, wonderful young men. Uh, you know, just a great advert for the game in Oceania. They they tr they train so hard and work so hard in the, and and sometimes don't get the results that they probably deserve. But look at these young men; they're just absolutely immaculate athletes. Oh, a slight knock on there, but he got up high, didn't he? Yep. So let's see what the Cook Islands can do with this ball. Opu doing well there for the Cook Islands team. They're spreading it to the edge. I'll look for Lawrence here at fly half just to really settle it. Playing with width. One thing is when you play the Samoans, you know that you know that the tackles will will, will be done with effort. And there's nothing there's no quarter given here. It's oh, true. Oh, that's a shame for the Cook Islanders. They've, they've gone off their feet there. An attacking team penalty. Tough, but Samoa back with the ball in the 22. Comes out wide to the big man. And the prop, 2C, with the play, play the ball. Fawiono with the ball out wide. Can they put it down in the corner? Turn. Oh, it's a penalty there. Might see a yellow card here. Yeah. Intentional foul there. In the red zone. Yeah. And the winger down there, Maliato for Samoa. He's uh, he, he received a very high pass. Samoans back on the attack here. Uh, simple numbers game out wide. Down to six, the Cook Islanders. This is not the start they would have liked to this game. They're down to six, and uh, the Samoans are uh, just pouncing on every opportunity there and, and yeah. spread the ball wide. And the winger looked up, and no one in front of him, so he just, just rolled over and placed the ball under the black dot. So a lively start by the young Samoan boys. Showing, I guess, carrying on the form from day one. Yep. Absolutely. Red hot team. They are the red and hot a team. Third conversion there to uh, number 12, Paul Wolf. No, they look very, uh, very fit. And the ability to move the ball quickly to the edges is, uh, is a huge advantage in sevens. And, uh... Oh, beautiful in the air. No, these Samoans are on fire, James. Absolutely on fire. Spread it wide, plenty of space. Takes it to the line. Fawiono looks for the support in the in goal area, but puts it down. And that's a great try. Yeah, just the scrum half there, just straightening up, straightening up the Samoan attack, and uh, the winger had to stay out wide, and there was a hole on his on the Cook Islands winger's inside shoulder. And uh, the scrum half went through it like a needle thread. Four yeah. tries and four conversions. 28-0 yeah, yeah. to the Samoans. It's a great yeah. start here. Yep, the Cook Island boys uh, down to six for another minute. Um, we'll really want to c try to control this ball for that next minute so that they can uh, mount some sort of attack and try to get themselves back onto, onto the score sheet. But clever play here by the Samoans, just knowing oh, that's the first mistake by a Samoan in the first five minutes of this game. They went cleverly, short kick off. There was no one on that 10 metre line and uh, they went for that quick kick. And unfortunately, he knocked the ball on. So good for the Cook Island guys. So they'll, they'll get a moment here as they come back to seven players on the field. So we'll see what the Cook Island boys can do with the ball in hand.
Nice step. Breaks up first defender. Always important. What can they do here? Need to get out of there. Ter down the uh, Samoan end of the field. Samoan, the Samoan defence just swarming all over the Cook Islanders at the moment. Carver cleaning up, shifting the ball, need to get it wide. And they do. Oh, it's just dropped there. Play, need to play the whistle. Advantage there to the Samoans. Advantage would be over now. And That's it. Can the Samoans finish off? Sepalona. Sepalona. He goes just alone. Starts through. And <laughs> goes alone and scores there. The uh, the penalty given to Samoa there, five metres out, and, and the Cook Island defence were in sixes and sevens, and uh, he just tapped the ball and did a little jink and went in under the black dot. So it could be a long, long second half for these uh, these young Cook Island boys. Yeah, so we head into the break with this Samoa versus Cook Islands clash 35-0. Five converted tries for the Samoans. Perfect off the boot from the uh, the winger, Paul Wolf. A couple of tries uh, to the fly half, Sepalona, and uh, a few other tries shared among the boys. Yeah, look, uh, it's, it's all been one-way traffic, really, for the, for the big Samoan boys. And, and when I say big, they are. They've come over to... Uh, the commentary area here to do their half time and there would be there would be one there would be ten of them over six six foot wouldn't they they, they are big tall fit young men intimidating men. intimidating and that's uh, it's certainly with the ball skills that they have and the, and the way they hit in defense they've certainly got the right recipe to be a you know to be a strong side and they have shown it this weekend so watch out ladies and gentlemen for the Samoan side and what do you think the message down to the Cook Island boys will be now? Well, I think there's a couple of messages to do. They, 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 they just need to work harder when they've got the ball, I think. They were just pushing the ball across the field, left and right, and, and no one taking the ball forward. They need, to, they need someone to commit to take that ball forward and go forward in numbers and, and see if they can get in behind the Samoan boys. Shorten up those passes a bit, few yep. balls going to ground. Exactly, and, Get and, the and go they, forward. yeah, well, you know, that's that, that's just the and the right to go wide, even in sevens. That's exactly right. It's 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 the the same principle in fifteens or sevens that if you if you're not going forward, the game becomes a very difficult game because the Samoan defence can come up and shut you down. So I think. Uh, the coach of the Cook Island team would have just been saying, come on, boys, hold on to the ball, get some go forward, and, and we'll see what we can do against these guys. So a little bit of pride here for the Cook Island boys as we head into the second half and, uh, and some good more practice for the Samoan boys to, uh, to use their bench and get a few players some time on the field that they might have not been able to do against a stronger side. So their bench looks very settled, the Samoan boys. And the Cook Island boys are back into the, their huddle, so away we go for the next seven minutes. And they've regathered the kickoff, so good start. Better play Let's here by the Cook do. Island boys. Ooh, a bit of a bit high of, shot. A little bit. No, I think that just on. hit him underneath the, uh, the, shoulder. the shoulders, so that's okay. He fell into it a little bit too, so the referees let that go. And good feet there. Beautiful feet yeah, by the Cook Islands. This is much better from the Cook Islands. Lawrence with the ball. Out to the sub, Heather. Here's an overlap here if they can get it wide. Taking forward, well recycled. Akava taking that ball into that ruck. So Lawrence, uh, the half back here, taking the ball, oh, good quick hands. hands. This is exactly what we talked about, taking the ball forward, although a poor pass there. Got some numbers here, the Cook Islanders have taken it from edge to edge. Right. 
And they've got two on one. Ball to hand. Heather takes it into contact, yes. gets the offload, oh. and it's a little knock on there. What a disappointment that a was. A great passage of play. They'd certainly uh, done all the hard work there, and they were spread out to this side of the field. And Pepe, the number 11 there for the Cook Islands, just, he, he just couldn't, after some great lead-up play, I watched him three times do some great work there, and then he just feathered that ball forward, and the Samoan boys smiled brightly as they got the scrum because they were going to be tested there. A couple of substitutions made here by Samoa as they go into the scrum, so fresh legs. They'll probably look to get this one wide. And a slight forward pass. Unlucky there for the little halfback off the... Off the back of the scrum, working that three on two down the, the right hand side of the field. Yeah, just look at the results here. The Samoans beat the Fijians 19 12 yesterday mm. um, and scored some big, big points in the other game. So they are well set, aren't they? Disappointing there for. The scrum half just throwing the ball forward, but uh, gives the ball, uh, yep, we'll Cook Islands Cook Island another opportunity. Yep. They look good last time they had the ball. Hopefully, they can continue that against this mighty Samoan team. Riverview has never looked better, has it, James? A glorious afternoon or morning it is. Beautiful autumn day. Mm. Don't know if we've had autumn yet, but here they go. To Akana with the ball. Shapes it back to a carver, takes it into contact. Good clean out there from the Samoans. Turnover ball. Can they hold him up? For some more. They've got to go to ground here. They've got to go to ground to make this a mall. There's not enough Samoans in there to make a mall. There's only one Samoan player in that, and they needed to have two. So they had to well work from the together. Samoans, and they reap the yep, reward for do. their smart play. That's clever play. Everyone from the Cook Islands uh, camp were calling, held up, held up, and they were looking to hold it up. But unfortunately, they need one more person in there from the Samoan side, and he wasn't set to commit. And very clever play by the Samoans there. By not committing, they all stood and watched and waited for that moment where the ball went to ground and, and the Samoan could play the ball and one pass and they score. So showing good tenacity and, and intelligence in, in uh, knowing the laws of the game. And uh, unfortunately for the Cook Islands boys, the, uh, the rubber of the green went against them there. There's some impressive athletes in this uh, Samoan team. That was uh, on Osse, Steve on Osse, the, the, the number nine who scored that try. He looks very quick. Butted back by the Cook Islands, it falls into the Samoan hands. They look to take it straight up the middle of the field and now shift it wide. And oh, well intercepted there, we there. Well done. Yeah. So the number 12 from the Cook Islands will race away. Tangi Akava. <laughs> Under the post, bit of a cheeky grin yeah. back at the chasing defence. But he gets the ball down. He just encouraged the Samoans to come and tackle him, and he was just too quick there. So he was, uh, I don't know when the score's this much against them. <laughs> That's probably the thing to do. But uh, they certainly are enjoying this moment here in the, in the sun and scoring that try, that intercept try. So good on them. And uh, as I say, they've showed a great deal of spirit this tournament and uh, enjoying, this, enjoying this outing against the Samoans. Much more settled half and composed half from the, from the Cook Islands. Um, patience with the ball and then look for the opportunities and uh, yeah. Yeah, playing with a lot more ball in hand, which they, uh, they lacked in the first half. So. I think the Samoans were um, they're playing like millionaires there. They thought they could just pass the ball out and the, the, the tries will come. They've got to work as we talked about at halftime, worked the right to go forward there and they, they were just a bit lateral, pushing the ball to that edge and uh, Carver saw an opportunity and he leapt on it and ran 50, 60 metres to score.
So, so it's safely taken there, the restart. The Samoans again look to shift it. Plenty of hands and a good line there. Little kick forward from an offside. And still in the hands of the Samoans. And might hold this one up now for them all. This is what they were trying to do previously, and uh, this time... And they get the result this time. This time they were all... Uh, they were all in it. So, well done by the Cook Island boys. Maybe a couple minutes left to yeah, see if they can finish off with one more. I'm going to ask a few more questions here. Cook Island boys, can they finish with, with a try? from their own making rather than an intercept. They look to get wide here to the right-hand side of this Riverview field. Samoans up quickly. Samoa just playing the ball on the ground there. Yeah. So Cook Islands with a good opportunity. Numbers out to the left-hand side. And they look to shift it. Out to a carver. Lawrence with the wide ball, but he's done well there to avoid the pressure, the, up, the rush defence. Some good speed. They've held on to it, so here we go, four on three out here on the left side. Tiariki taking the ball into contact. Advantage here to the Cook Islands and they get the, they get the penalty. This is much better from the Cook Island boys on the front foot here. So to a car... Plays the ball to the right, a little switch of play. Lawrence looking to get the balls into the winger. Opportunity here for the Cook Island boys. Couldn't be long to go here. And Thomas taking oh. the ball up the middle of the field, and he goes for the line. Can he get there? He pops the ball out to the... Oh, and it's oh, just found touch. That's disappointing there. We've got really good build up there by the Cook Island boys, and we've uh, called the jam off. And much better second half. The mm. coaches will be much happier there, and the Samoan boys might have just gone to sleep a little bit and put their cue in the rack, as they say, at half time because they weren't the uh, dominant side that they were in the first half. So that is wraps up that one between the uh, Samoans and the Cook Islands. 42 to 7 there, convincing victors, and they'll head into that top uh, top team playoff this afternoon, and we'll wait to see who they play against after the next couple of matches. I think we're handing over to uh, Patrick Folks, and we're being joined by Mahalia for this one. We'll see. Otherwise, Doylo. Thanks, James. That was great fun. I'll catch you in a little bit. Yeah, we'll be back on air later together. So I look forward to that. Thanks. Mate. Okay, so here we go. This one here, we've got the Fijians versus the Solomon Isles. Hello, sorry, I just lost 